Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Yellow. Last time, we conquered the gym here in Fuchsia City, and we earned ourselves our sixth gym badge, which is super awesome. We only have two more to get, which is really crazy. Anyway, in between episodes, I sold off all of our repels and the nugget we found in the Safari Zone, and I bought us 20 super repels, which are actually the most cost-efficient variety of repels, so if you're gonna buy one, I recommend that's the one you buy. I also deposited our HM04 in the PC since we don't need to carry it around anymore. Anyhow, this time we are heading south in this direction to a new route. This is Route 19, I believe. All the Pokemon trainers on this route train water types and none of them are above level 30. So this is probably going to be a really good opportunity to train up Lapras. To that end, I have switched it into the front so we can do the switch in, switch out strategy. Anyway, trainers from Red and Blue might notice that there is a new house on this route. I'm going to be getting to that momentarily, but for now we are going to be doing the old bait and switch strategy, and I think we're going to be switching in Venusaur instead of Pikachu just because Venusaur is at a lower level, and Venusaur is going to be very useful in one upcoming gym in particular, so we're going to want to keep that in mind. Anyway, before we get too far into this, I should mention this is the first video I am recording after hitting 800 subscribers, which is really, really crazy to me. This channel is almost five years old, and yet just about a year ago, we were at 500 subscribers, so we've grown a lot in the past year. It's kind of crazy to me. I'll be honest, I feel like we can attribute at least some of that to Pokemon Go, because the Liquid Crystal Let's Play in particular has gotten insane amounts of views recently. The playlist, I believe, is currently sitting at 48,000 views. That's an awful lot by my standards. Really, really, really insane. So, if you're new, I'd like to say, welcome, please enjoy your stay, and hopefully I can continue providing interesting content. And if I can't, well then, make sure to let me know, because if I'm doing something that you guys aren't really feeling or aren't really into, definitely let me know, because then I can use that information to make decisions regarding the channel in the future. Anyway, trainer number two right here. This route has 10 trainers in total, I believe, and none of them are going to be particularly difficult. This route's probably just going to take us a while just because I really want to get Lapras's level up, because Lapras has the potential to be useful in the next gym we're going to be taking on, and I'm really hoping we can get it to a point where it'll be able to hold its own at least a little bit. Alright, so we're just gonna razor leaf this Goldeen right here. I believe this guy has three Pokemon, which shouldn't be too terrible. The one annoying thing about this route having all water Pokemon is you're only going to be seeing Pokemon from like four or five lines. Not a whole lot of variety on this route. You're gonna be seeing the Goldeen family, the Horsey family, the Staryu family, the Tentacool family, and the Shelder family, and I think the Poliwag family, so... Decent amount of variety, I guess, it's just they're all water types and they're all pretty similar. And the strategy to take them on will all be the same, especially since they're so low leveled compared to us. And it's kind of funny, I've got the map of this route pulled up just so I'm not wandering around in the ocean trying to find all these trainers. And this map is on the strategy wiki, and they actually recommend doing this route even later than I'm doing, so... Yeah. If you follow their route, you're gonna be even more overleveled when you come to do this route. It's crazy. I'm really not sure why they... the uh, developers of the game put a route this late with trainers with Pokémon of such low level. I feel like they could put these Pokémon in like the mid-30s like 36, 37 level, and the game would still be completely fine and balanced. But yeah, I think that just goes back to what I've been saying in previous episodes, where I feel like Game Freak didn't really know what they were doing when it came to balancing this game quite yet. Anyway, 
that is the second trainer on the beach and now we have this sign right here sea route 19 fuchsia city to the sea foam islands very cool anyway we have this house right here and believe it or not there's pikachu very neat and it just sidestepped is that norm that was weird maybe that's like a glitch or something also right here it's some sort of a machine i believe this can be used to print out high scores in the minigame that you can play in this house using the Game Boy printer, which is really interesting. The minigame in question is accessed by talking to this guy. Dogs and burgers on special today. You need to have a surfing Pikachu in your party. A Pikachu that knows surf in order to play this minigame. It's a minigame called Pikachu's Beach, which is basically like a little surfing minigame not entirely unlike excite bike as i understand it i've never played it and odds are a lot of you have probably never played it either the only way to get a surfing pikachu in this game as far as i know is to get it through pokemon stadium which is a game that i do technically own but i feel like connecting my n64 to this emulator probably wouldn't work out too terribly well However, for anyone who owns the 3DS release of Pokemon Yellow, that minigame is actually accessible to any Pikachu, which is really, really neat, and I'm glad they did that, because otherwise there'd be no way to access it. So if you do actually have the, um, the uh, virtual console release of Pokemon Yellow, I definitely recommend trying out that minigame. Anyway, this is where we're going to be using our Super Repels, because I really, really, really don't want to have to deal with wild Pokemon in this area. Although I am realizing, I believe Repels work the same way they do in later generations, where if your Pokemon is low-leveled compared to the wild Pokemon, you'll still encounter them. And since Lapras is only level 21, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work out. So I guess we're just going to have to see. Also, I did go and check our inventory. We do have eight rare candies, and I'm pretty sure there's at least a couple more hidden in the game somewhere. So if we wind up near the end of the game and Lapras is still pretty low leveled relative to the others, we should be able to use the rare candies to get it up there a little bit, which should be really nice. Anyway, we've got another horsey coming out right here. I'm going to switch Lapras back in. It's slow going with these low-level Pokemon. I'm just hoping that once we get through this couple of water routes, it should be a little bit higher leveled. Because running around with a level 21 Pokemon among a sea of level 40s isn't going to work out too terribly well. So hopefully we can make it happen. And critical hit. I always love me some critical hits. And we defeated the swimmer. Very nice. Now let's see if we're going to encounter wild Pokemon with Lapras in the front. Eh, not yet at least. Maybe we're getting luckier. Maybe the wild Pokemon in this route are just insanely low leveled. Either way, I'm happy with it. Alright, we have another swimmer right here. And yeah, these next couple of episodes are probably going to seem a little bit tedious just because it's going to be a lot of the same thing over and over again. A lot of water Pokemon to deal with here, and... Oh, oh that's frustrating. Oh, Poliwag using Hypnosis. Well, at least it found some way to keep this interesting. Sheesh. Wow, that's doing insane damage. Like, seriously. I don't think I'll be able to survive this. <laughs> Alright. Venusaur, I'd appreciate it if you... Well, you know what? What am I doing? I have the freaking Poke Flute with me. Uh, that's just one of those things that even though I made special mention of why I'm carrying it around, I'm always going to forget it exists. Alright, let's play the Poke Flute with the weird music skip included. And all sleeping Pokemon, oh, wake up. Very good. And now I'm asleep again because this game sucks. So let's play the Poke Flute again. What is this game? What is this game? What is this game? Ugh. 
honestly, when crap like that happens, when crap like this happens, I'm almost convinced the AI is cheating. Because, like, why else would it spam hypnosis unless it was supremely stupid? Like, I feel like the game isn't smart enough to realize, oh, hey, he might be playing the poke flute. I think it's just cheating. Jeez. Uh, that was rough. Alright, anyway, let's take this guy out as quickly as possible. And Lapras is slowly getting up there, and Venusaur gets level 37, which is also very nice. And next up we have a Poliwhirl up to bat. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but in case I haven't, I'm pretty sure Poliwag's swirl on its belly actually switches direction when it evolves, which is really interesting. Also, fun fact, I'm pretty sure Poliwhirl is actually Junichi Masuda, not Junichi Masuda, uh, Satoshi Tajiri's favorite Pokemon, which is really neat. Alrighty. And Hypnosis actually missed, and we brought it down quite quickly, which I am happy about, because if I had fallen victim to another series of Hypnosis spamming, that would be incredibly frustrating. What's beyond the horizon, you ask? Ooh, I don't know. Very, very interesting little thought he has there. Alright, this guy's got four Pokemon, which is quite a lot. I'm not sure if we're going to get through this entire route this episode just because we have to switch in Lapras to get its level up. But I'm hoping that we'll be able to get to the next town within the next three episodes, including this one. So if we can get to the next town by the end of episode 51, I think it is, I think we'll be in good shape. Alright, I've actually planned out the remainder of the Let's Play, and it's looking like the Let's Play is probably going to wrap up around 64, 65 episodes. Might be a little bit longer, because usually when, I, when it comes to planning these things out, I tend to us, not under, yes, under estimate, yes, that is the word, I can speak English, I tend to underestimate how long things are going to take. For example, I'm pretty sure in my initial draft of Sylph Company, I had that area taking three or four episodes. And as you all probably know, it took us six, which is pretty rough. Also, one thing worth noting, when I use Razor Leaf on Tentacool, listen to the sound it makes. It makes the not very effective sound. However, that's not actually the case. The game will say it's not very effective, and it'll make the sound effect, but that's not actually what's happening. What happens is, that little sound effect is based on, as far as I'm aware, the second type of the Pokémon you hit. So when I use Razor Leaf on Tentacool, it sees, oh, it's a water type, it's super effective, and then it applies the not very effective multiplier of the poison type on top of that, and the not very effective effect on the poison type of Tentacool is what the game reports. But as far as I know, the actual math that it's doing to calculate how much damage it's going to do is actually correct. So you don't have to worry about it doing less damage than it should. It is doing the right damage, it's just not making the right sound. Which is an interesting glitch that is only in Generation 1 and was definitely fixed once we moved into Generation 2, so in any future games you don't have to worry about the game glitching out and misreporting that, because honestly, it's a really, really easy thing to fix and make sure it doesn't happen, because all the game has to do is read off the final multiplier and say what the sound effect is based on that, so definitely a really easy fix for the developers. Anyway, gonna take out this Goldeen right here with another beautiful critical hit. And we defeated the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th trainer on this route, I think? 5th sounds right. Anyway, there's another trainer right here. I tried diving for Pokemon, but it was a no-go. Ruby and Sapphire reference? I kinda miss uh, the dive HM, to be honest. It was really, really cool to have it in the Hoenn-based games, and to have 
very lesser extent, Black and White and its sequel. But I'm really hoping that we can get some more interesting uses of Dive. And honestly, I was really expecting it to be back in Sun and Moon, and I was kind of disappointed that it wasn't, because it's just a really neat idea. I know it's technically, quote-unquote, just another Water HM, but like when you think about it, when you dive on a water route, it's like you discover a whole second area of equivalent size to that route, kind of like the whole light world, dark world thing that you tend to see in Zelda games. And just for that reason alone, I think Dive is definitely very underappreciated, and out of all the water HMs, it's probably my favorite in terms of its field use. Although, when it comes to in-battle use, my favorite water HM is probably either Surf or Waterfall. Because Waterfall does a lot of damage, and it also causes flinching, which is really cool. Anyway, gonna take another tackle right there, which is gonna bring Venusaur down a little bit on health. But I mean, we still have Pikachu with us, so we should be alright going forward here. Alright, next up is, ooh, Seeking. That's a pretty powerful one. I think just to ensure Venusaur stays conscious, I might want to switch into Pikachu instead, because Seeking generally comes packing Peck, which is super effective. Uh, ooh. Ouch. Yeah, Peck is super effective on Venusaur, and that's something I really want to avoid getting hit by. And wow, that did a lot of damage. Jeez, why did that do so much damage? Oh, come on. Is this really going to be another one of those beautiful RNG moments where I'm just going to hit myself in confusion until I pass out? It's looking like it. Game. Wow, that was beautiful. I don't know what you guys think, but that was absolutely phenomenal. Like, ugh, that was, that was bad. And watch, Venusaur is going to take it down in one shot, so me tanking Pikachu right there is, yep, completely useless. Uh, he. Anyway, we have defeated the Swimmer, and with that, I think I should actually go back and heal. Alrighty, we are back and fully healed, but I think with that, we are going to be ending things off here, because this episode's getting a little bit long. So, this past episode of Pokemon Yellow... We began our journey southwards into the ocean on our way to the next town. And next time on Pokemon Yellow, we are going to be continuing that journey. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Nyorozo! Otama Pokemon! Takasa! 1.0m! Omosa! 20.0kg! Nihon no ashi wa hattatsu shite ori! 地上で暮らせるのになぜか水中生活が好き。<音楽>